beautiful. Thank you, Lexi. <coughs> well, I'd like to welcome all of you to Unity Church Faith this morning. You know, this is a special day in your life. This is a gift for you to live through today. So, enjoy it. Make the most of it. And I'd like to also, uh, in advance, thank people who are filling in for Larry Clark, who is still ill, and uh, I appreciate your help. And I know the rest of us do, too. Thank you. Okay. Oh, okay. oh I guess I'm chaplain today. Hmm. How about that? Okay. Thank you, Ben. Um, after the service, please join us for coffee and treats. <coughs> okay. Let's take a moment for prayer. If you wish, close your eyes. Begin to focus on your breathing. As you do so, allow yourself to enter that special inner sanctuary where you tune in to that light of God that shines through you. Dear God, we are filled with a sense of being an important part of the whole. Your presence within opens our heart and mind to our inner Christ light, illuminating the way to our highest good. We move forward with confidence. By staying focused on the God within, we are blessed in many ways. We give thanks for we are a window through which our Christ light shines. And we say thank you. Thank you, God. Amen. Okay. Yes, which line we're on? All right. Oh. All right. <laughs> that is tricky sometimes. <laughs> Pretty sensitive. Okay, as we say the Unity Worldwide Affirmation and the Unity of the Church Affirmation, uh, uh, I invite you to think of them as a prayer and holding them in collective intention. So please join me in saying Unity Worldwide Affirmation. Together, there is one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God the good, omnipotent. And the unity of Ames affirmation together. Through the Christ Spirit in us, we create a better church and a better world. So be it. You bet. Thank you. Please. Um, Todd, will you read the daily word today? Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> Today is May 1st, 2016, or 2016, self-image. I did not bring my microscope with me today, so I'll have to hold this out a little farther. <laughs> I see myself in the likeness of my creator, God the good. I am a child of God with divinity woven into the fabric of my being. My true nature is peace, love, and joy. I see myself as being divinely good and inspired by spirit. Yet there could be times when in my humanness, I express myself in ways that, are not reflect, that do not reflect my true divine nature. Rather than berate myself for any missteps, I take time once again to turn my mind to God. I reconnect with the loving qualities of the divine and remember the truth of who I am, a reflection of my creator. Every moment is a chance to more fully express my God-given qualities. I am a better person when I am one with the one who created me. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them 
male and female, he created them. And that's Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. <coughs> Thank you, Tom. As the Unity Seers will be performing a song written by Clark Ford, and it's called Inner Space.
It was good to be gone. All right, let's get this organized here. All right. Ah, wonderful. And I want to give a round of applause to my dear husband, who did a great job last week. I can leave more often. You're in good hands. Okay, this whole month of May, he says he doesn't know for sure about that. He said something about, boy, that's a deal to do that every week, isn't it? Is it mm, yeah, that's why I have to go away occasionally. So this whole month of May, we're on a journey together called Touching the Stillness. Touching the stillness, not the silence, but the stillness. And they're not the same, but we'll get there. That's the overarching theme or umbrella. Be still and know. That's our retreat. So do come on the retreat, oh, you fearless unitics. Please, sign up. Because after four days at Unity Village, in the silence, I actually do feel hungry for more. I actually do want more. Because as I go figure, right? You think after four days, you just want to yuck, yuck, yuck. But as I sat in meditation and I ate in silence and I did walking meditations and I ate in silence again, I finally was getting comfortable not checking my email, my iPod, playing computer solitaire, um, checking Facebook, my cell phone. <clears throat> I'm not addicted to electronics. <laughs> no, no, not me. Not even a little bit. It's those young people, the millennials, they're the ones who are addicted to electronics. Not me, you know, I'm too spiritual. I like real books, right? And I still have a paper planner to prove that I'm not addicted and an old-fashioned cell phone. I don't even have an iPhone, but could I leave it alone? <laughs> no. I left that and my extra pair of shoes in the car. So we went and did the walking meditation. I went out switched my shoes and, of course, checked my cell phone to see if anybody texted or called me, right? Why are we so addicted to that? What is the need to know? I don't have a clue. I'm kind of a dinosaur with technology. I've got one foot in the new millennial century and paper planner, one foot in the old. Okay. So really, just about the time I was getting ready to leave, I had gone through withdrawal, right? <laughs> and I could do without all of that, and I could be silent. How about a whole week? Yeah, how about a whole month? I think I could do that, a week. I'm not sure ready for a month, but I'm willing to contemplate that. It sounds good to me. It sounds like Garrison Keillor's invitation, send your kids to Amish camp. Yeah. Have you heard that? And you send them back into the 19th century, right? To Amish camp, to live at the Amish, and they come back and they can actually carry on a uh, reciprocal conversation with you <laughs> without texting you in the middle of it, okay? So to be honest, to be really honest, I do have a regular meditation practice. And I've done so for many years, and it means a lot to me. And it supports everything I do each day. If I miss it, I can feel it. And I begin my, my day, every day, with dedicated time for prayer, spiritual readings, the Daily Word, Mark Nepo, and other things, and then 20 minutes at least of silence, sitting in meditation. I do it first thing before I eat breakfast. And I do it even on Sundays, especially on Sundays, because I have to get connected. I have to get connected. So what is it that shouts to me, oh, yo, you, there? Yeah. Make space for inner space. Make more space for inner space. What is that? And why do I need to do that? Hmm. Don't know, but I need to let the mud settle once again. And maybe it's because when I do get quiet for a long period of time, I start with Sally's breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, hyperventilating, right? Counting your breath, trying to still the mind. 
But what I actually came face to face with were all the little gremlins in my consciousness that I really didn't want to see. Right? When you get really quiet, you come up against all these little things, these niggly little gremlins. The very first time I went on an extended silent retreat, I've been on lots of retreats, and on those retreats we do one overnight in the silence. Well, I can handle that. But an extended period of silence, it was a prayer class required by Robert Brummett that we do this, and I could hardly stand it. You know, by the second day I wanted to cut and run. But I paid for it, and I'm too cheap not to stay and get my money's worth, right? <laughs> I had paid for it, and I needed the credit. And as uh, you professors all know, students will do just about anything for credit, and so I had to stay. And it's a good thing I did, because I got what I paid for. What I've figured out about retreats is you don't always get what you want, but you always get what you need. Yes, you knew I was going to say that. You always get what you need, even if you don't know that you need it. It was during that retreat with breathing that I just had this incredibly powerful experience. It was like a heart-opening experience with Robert. And it was something that allowed me to begin to stay present to myself in all of my life experiences, not just here at church, not just when I'm meditating, but in all of my life encounters. I don't always manage that, but now I can recognize it when I space out and I leave mentally emotionally, and that was the gift. When I check out, I can recognize that. And at least I thought I could until this time. <laughs> always, right? Always. Always there's this time. So the week before I left for Unity Village, I read an article from a fellow Unity minister, Jane Simmons. Do any of you know her name? She is Gary Simmons' wife. And Gary Simmons did that whole eye of the storm and all of that work, the hue effect, and you've had that here. She is at Unity of Spokane in Washington, and she has a prison ministry. Her prison ministry has a mission. Their mission statement, our mission is to inspire people to make a difference in the world. I think that's beautiful. I really like that. And for a prison ministry, that's quite powerful. That's the mission. And she has an Alternatives to Violence program. That's what she takes into the prisons. There is a link to the article, and I put it, I'll put it in the Faith Lift this week, and it will be on our Faith Lift on the web if you want to read more about what she does. But it's self-selected inmates who join her, they play games. They play games where they have to cooperate. And they play games where when they mess up, it doesn't matter, and they begin to laugh about how they show up and how they are. They play cooperative pattern games, and in this process, they learn to be vulnerable with each other. They ultimately learn to open their hearts and to share the real story of why they're there. She doesn't make them talk about their feelings. She just creates the conditions in which they open up and they do that. Imagine hardcore convicts sharing that in prison. They're in prison after all. There aren't too many escape routes, right? The blessing for them, as I read this article and reflected on my experience in the silence is they know they're in prison. No doubt about it. They know that they are in prison. <coughs> With that reality as a constant, well, then they are free within that prison to open up. And they do just that. So well, how does that matter to me and to you? I'm not in prison. Or am I? 
Because when I got really, really, really quiet, perhaps you open your heart just a little bit to see the invisible prison that you are in. That's what happened to me. During the talks, during the retreat, Robert Brummett does some Dharma talks or talks about mind states is what he talked about. And a mind state, that's not like your thoughts. Your thoughts are like the little raindrops or thunderclap or something like that. Mind states are like the weather. And the weather in your conscious awareness, what is it like? What is the weather like in your conscious awareness? That's a mind state. And that's the real question. What is the weather in your mind state, in your conscious awareness most of the time? And are you even aware of the weather? It's been a bit drippy and gloomy lately. I have to say, that's matched my feeling mind state in this evolution. Because it, it can be your invisible prison one you don't even realize or recognize until you make room for that inner space. Jesus talked about inner space. He called it the kingdom of heaven. And wouldn't you know, they put it at the very, very last place we'd ever look for it, right? Because Jesus says in the Gospel of Luke, he is teaching, it's Gospel of Luke, 17 through 20, 17 verses 20 and 21. And it says, Jesus is talking about the coming of the kingdom. Once Jesus was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God was coming, when is it coming? And he answered, the kingdom of God is not coming with things that can be observed. Nor will they say, look, here it is, or there it is. For in fact, the kingdom of God is within you. Okay. The kingdom of God is within us. Inner space. Making room. Making space for that inner space. Last Sunday, Todd talked a lot about freedom. And that his life's mission, this go-around, was to realize true freedom. That's a big one. That's a big one, Tom. But you know what? I think we're all trying to do that. We are all trying to do just that. That's our human mission. To be free from our invisible prisons. We're each seeking to make more space in our own mind and heart for a larger consciousness larger space, a true sense of freedom, to feel free within our own skin, in our own mind. We all want to be let out of the prison and to have more space for that kingdom of God, that Christ consciousness within us to be made real. And here's the kicker. This is also something Jesus said. I didn't want to hear this either. The key is something we hold. We hold the key to that freedom. Hey, really? We hold the key. It's in Matthew. This one's in Matthew. It's Matthew 5. I first heard this at Unity Village. Earl Anderson said it, and it struck me like a lightning bolt. Agree with thine enemies quickly. It's in Matthew 5, verses 25 through 27. And it says, come to terms with your accuser while you are on the way to court with him, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge, the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have paid the last penny. Agree with thine enemies quickly. Agree with thine enemies quickly. The key to this process is to make friends with your accuser. Agree with your enemy because the grudge that you hold puts you in a prison of your own making. 
the grudge you are holding puts you in a prison of your own making and you don't get out of that prison until you have paid the last penny. Isn't that the truth? It was in the four days of silence last week at Unity that I connected with a huge grudge that I was holding that I didn't even realize, that I didn't want to acknowledge. I didn't want to admit how angry I was. And I had to get quiet enough to see all the space it was taking up in my heart, in my mind, in my consciousness. And what's the price that I paid? Let's keep this real, very real. Because since mid-April of 2015, I have been just really, really angry about something. And I have been holding that, ignoring it, right? Well, I'm going to be spiritual. I'll meditate it away. <laughs> My body wouldn't let me do that. My body was the biggest clue to what was really happening in the weather of my consciousness. I have been able, unable to make a fist with my right hand since about the end of April, 1st of May last year. And which finger do you think is the one that I can't really move and bend? <laughs> Guess what? Is that a shocker? No. And I've been to physical therapy. I've been to... Um, Oh my God, everywhere. I've had physical therapy, acupuncture, massage, mountains of herbs, and lots of bottles of Aleve and Aproxodium. I've had sleepless nights. I've had all kinds of agitation. And I didn't know what it was about. Didn't understand it until I got quiet. And the laugh, my inner Pharisee was going to fix this, right? My inner Pharisee was going to fix this come hell or high water, right? I'm looking outside of myself, and where is the answer all along? Is inside to connect with what's there. When I finally began talking about it, talking with Robert about it, expressing it, journaling, writing about it, well, guess what? I can just about get my hand closed. It hasn't been that close in months, a year, without hurting. And I've been sleeping. The kingdom of God is within us. It's connecting with whatever is there. And it's a process, too. It's not like one and done. Oh, I got it now. No. It's like tolerating and realizing the weather in my consciousness was pretty stormy and riding the storm out. We don't let go of it all at once. It's not like a balloon that you pop. But what we do is lean into it with willingness to see and feel what's there. And as we do, we make more space for inner space. And I'm right there with you in the process. This is something I invite us all to do. And it'll take a while, and that's okay. Because each step that I take, each part of this process and these feelings I allow to be expressed make more space for inner space. For the kingdom of God within me to take up a little more room and to be realized. And that's all part of our journey to freedom. So this month, O oh Fearless Unitics, we are going to continue to make space for inner space. So let's do that. Let's sing into meditation. This is a new one. I think we've had it before, but it's, we haven't. And I think it's great. It's I'm quiet, I'm calm, I'm at ease, <coughs> even as I'm not. So we'll hold space for all of it.
and begin to notice your breath. And allow the breath to just lengthen. For it is the breath that takes you there to that inner space. As you inhale, feel your chest opening and your heart having just a little more room. Exhale, just let it out. Whatever it is that's in there, just sigh it out. Inhale together. And sigh it out. Ah, let it go. One more time. Let's inhale together. Ah, whatever is there, the gremlins, the weather in your conscious awareness. Whatever is taking up space, whoever it is, whatever it is, allow yourself to see it, to acknowledge it. And maybe it's even something within yourself, your own anxieties or worries or fear, whatever it is, just Breathe into it, lean into it. And even in the face of that, as you allow it, hold that affirmation, I'm quiet, I'm calm, I'm at ease. It doesn't hijack me. I can be with this, and still feel connected to that kingdom within. Breathe in and out. Let it go. Breathe in and find that place of ease. In that place of ease and the ability to be with it is our freedom. So we're going to sit now with all of that in the silence, making space for everything. What we want, what we don't want, all of it. And allow more inner space for that kingdom to hold it all as we sit now for a time in the stillness of the silence. Come back to this time and this place with that feeling of calm, quiet, and ease. And we'll sing one more time.
we let it be. Let that be your mantra this week as you deal with your gremlins. Ford made a car called the gremlin, didn't they? And it constantly broke down and had the exploding gas tank. Okay, whenever you have your gremlin, all right. I'm quiet, I'm calm, I'm at ease. All right. So Yay, God.